excellent. Yeah, well, welcome, James. Yes. Uh, We're hello there. Hi there. Hi, I, I'm Phil, and hello, we've got nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, and we've got two therapists, Deborah and uh, Daniel. And um, we, we were expecting some more, and they may turn up, but I'm afraid we're just we've got two, and they're both well, they're both acupuncturists, Chinese medicine yeah. people. So um, we've had your um, your thing through. Thanks very much. So um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not sure where to start. Do, do, perhaps um, there's some questions to ask um you or maybe you've got some questions that you'd like to ask first yeah yeah because um obviously i got diagnosed with bipolar which was about five years ago and i've been in hospital like section in hospital a few times Correct. and um it's been yeah very difficult for me and then i've had went through like a few manic episodes and it's just been difficult and i've been off work for a while because I had a relapse which happened just over half a year ago oh, and um, I was end up wandering around the streets I walked about in three consecutive days I walked about 120 kilometers because my mood went so elevated and I got oh, just really manic and yeah I was, you know yeah mm -hmm. um, yeah just went really crazy my mind and it's just it was a horrible period i ended up having going on spending sprees going around knightsbridge spending thousands of pounds and Gosh. yeah all part of yeah i got really unwell and yeah even what happened a few years ago i was even um like on the streets for a good few days just wandering around without sleeping Gosh. yeah so it's yeah it's been really hard so i've been you know i i work as you are in brighton but I've been off work for about just over half a year because I, you know, I went through my moves went a lot lower. Yeah. And then I was, you know, I've been in this kind of depression. It's been really difficult. So I went from the high and then now it's this low and it's just, I've had a hypnotherapist. But I found it just so difficult and I've really been like constantly worrying a lot and caring a lot what people think. And it's kind of the completely the other end. And I'm really yeah. like suffering what to do because um, it's, you know, I've tried hypnotherapy counseling and seen other psychologists and I've just been really finding it hard. And I know it could be partly the medication because I'm on mood stabilizers. Oh, right. I just, you know, yeah, it's just been, yeah, yeah, really difficult for me. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds really tough. Can't imagine. Yeah. I, I'm. Um, I mean, I wonder what the, um, the the Chinese medicine people would would want to say. What question? I mean, because there's some really down to earth questions that I've got in my mind. Is sort of things like diet and all that. Yeah. What What is your diet like? What do you eat? Yeah, my diet is not too bad. With eating healthy, I normally am eating quite healthy doing regular exercise yeah what, what, well hang on a running. minute before we before we go over that you said you eat healthy what does that oh, actually, yeah. what is that what's this eating what is your diet i'm not saying it's not so healthy it could, be, it could be like making kind of like could be salads i'm sometimes having pasta high protein diets i blend a lot of um smoothies with a nutri bullet Oh, so I do that. And my grandmother's very into the healthy lifestyle. So she's got me these pills from America, these supplements. Oh wow. So um those are those are good. And I take a look, yeah, I've always been taking the vitamins, all from you know, vitamin B, C, D, yeah. loads of them, magnesium. So I take a lot. But, so, um, so what exactly are I mean are, are they where, where do the American vitamins come from? Do do, do um, you um she ordered that she follows a lot of nutrition and fine stuff and like telegram but there's someone she's been following about going for that diet to change that way of thinking and just a healthy kind of vitamins not oh, they're yeah. not really vitamins. i don't know how to describe it but she's been very into looking at these sort of um 
supplements and it's meant to be very helpful about changing you know neurons in the brain and trying yeah. to make things work better again to go for the alternative instead of the medication i'm on which has got right. side effects that can make it really difficult oh that yeah. she sounds she sounds like a lovely grandma yeah 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 she is yeah she's always trying to look for something sorry i'm probably not really making sense There's no not at all too much yeah. because i don't know where to start because there's just so much in my mind and of how to explain it it's just been quite difficult yeah so uh, it sounds to me like you you're trying you're trying to find some kind of balance because um you've been pulled one way and another and i noticed yeah. in your notes that it said that you're on olanzapine which is a really kind of it's quite a heavy drug isn't it, it makes you feel yes yeah, yeah it's anti-psychotic i think yeah or some similar to a mood stabilizer yeah. and what my grandmother was saying like the medication i'm on now with the because i'm on sodium valparate as well is they did put it up to 900 milligrams but that made me even more tired but now then on to 600 and now she said to carry on taking the supplements to do 300 so take their lands has been which i'm taking 10 milligram and then 300 so one capsule of the sodium valparate yeah so, so you know that if you are on medication then you need to do that you if you want to change the medication you have to do that with with some kind of medical advice because yeah. um, especially things like olanzapine i know that that's an, a really big issue i've treated other people before who've been on olanzapine mm -hmm. and then they've taken themselves off it and then actually yeah. what happens is then they've had another psychotic episode and then they put them on even more so mm. it's a really sort of difficult area we're, we're not yeah. allowed to um we're not we're not allowed to um take people off medication in any way whatsoever yeah. we can you know we always have to send you back to the doctor and tell you to go go and sort of mm. do it with the doctor um yeah. and sometimes you, i don't know what your doctor's like but sometimes you have doctors who are who are quite keen to try and moderate the medication because yeah. quite often it can be really over the top and yes i agree a lot of the things are side effects of the medication and that's really horrible as well because yeah, i've been on those pills for five years because i got um sectioned, sectioned. yeah sectioned and then i got sectioned the year after and then oh, six wow. months ago i had a relapse so it was around i was walking around at like four in the morning walked yeah. about 50 kilometers in the day didn't know, know there was no taxis coming over because they could have thought i was a drunk and i was you know i just got really unwell my mood just went so elevated and yeah. now because and then i it, it made it to well like you've probably read about it like i was on like and like on top of the world when i feel like i want all the attention on me i was you know i was going a lot of fashion because i studied fashion going in loads of fashions or talking to everyone and but now on the low, I all I do is I feel like the thoughts are really controlling me. So I really worry a lot. Yeah. I care what people think. Like I'm even, you know, just in a just say buying food in a grocery store and I'm just worried. I'm just like how people are perceiving me. It's yeah. completely different. It's the other end. So on the high, yeah. I'm not no filter. But then yeah. on the low, I'm just kind of yeah. It's just, it's so much well yeah. a lot i mean i i have treated people who are bipolar before and also um there was a there was a woman who was who trained as an acupuncturist she's because i'm an acupuncture teacher and she and she was bipolar and the reason why she trained was because acupuncture had really helped her with her bipolar um so obviously i'm biased because i think acupuncture is amazing but i'm just thinking about something that would be regular that would be really really useful um, and I, you know, I definitely think that you need to have something that is a regular thing that you do every week, you know, that kind of like holds you to that place so that you yeah. don't have these massive highs and lows, you know, yeah. whatever it is, it, it could be, it could be acupuncture, it could be herbs, it could be, um, it could be some kind of, you know, Reiki energy healing. I don't know what, but something yeah. that is just kind of regular. What do you, what do you reckon, Daniel? Yeah, I mean, that sounds like a, a pretty good way to start is putting some things in place that are, <clears throat> that can kind of smooth out 
a little bit the the high the peaks and the and the troughs a little bit and even if it doesn't it smooth it out initially just having that regularity in in seeing one person or two people can help um yeah that's lovely uh, emma's arrived hi emma hello, hello there. Hi. <laughs> Nice to see you. Hi. Uh, shall, shall I quickly bring you up to speed? Um, we're talking to James. James has shared um, his situation, which is that he's five years into, um, well, after being sectioned with um, bipolar and had and shared, you know, a really difficult period. And um, as I understand it, you're on quite strong Med medication which um i can't yeah. remember the name of what's it called alanzapine and sodium valproate they're not easy to remember <laughs> <laughs> thanks um alanzapine and, and uh so and yeah so that's and and emma is um a uh counselor so um that's and, and, and i'll let i'll let deborah carry on well me to carry on um well yeah and then you know whatever it is, some kind of regularity, you know, um, I, I've actually treated quite a few people with um, various mental health issues. And, and one of the things that we found is really useful is to have this kind of like every week, every week, every week, because then you've got something to come back to. So no matter where you're at, whether you're super high or super low, you know, then it, you've got something that, that, that you can hook into. And definitely in terms of Chinese medicine, that regularity is almost like building the structure so that you've got something to contain what's going on rather than just feeling completely like out of control be it super manic or super depressed that kind of idea you know and um, what that could be yeah. i mean you know i think that's i think that's a little bit of a of a sort of journey of discovery you know um what, one of the things that at the Anahata we really like is the idea that you can try all sorts of different things and then you you know quite often people sort of settle into something that they that they feel is best for them and you know I, I mean obviously I can't tell you what that could be and I was hoping that we'd have a whole load of different people to give us lots of different ideas but it, it might even be something as simple as as massage you know it, it might be something you know just like a physical thing do you see what i mean i yeah. I, I honestly don't know james you yeah, know because... well, i mean there was it could there's so many different things as i've tried like it's like i try meditation as well but it's very kind of like this is just like thinking in the moment because i've always been very into spirituality and reading power of now and books like that yeah. and it's just i found it very difficult because i have it's controlling my mind a lot i mean these thoughts because we i had hypnotherapy and that's extremely expensive. Those sessions are nearly, my grandmother ha helped a lot. And I had about five sessions and they were about nearly a hundred pound each. Oh and, it was, and it was really, and I, and you know, he tried to try and change my way of thinking by talking to me, but still it's, I, I don't know, I don't know what it could be because, you know, it's hard because I think one of the doctors said to me, that if I have another relapse, because as it's the third time, yeah. it's going to last a lot longer. So that's yeah. why my thoughts are racing and worrying a lot. And I just found it so difficult. Yeah. And it's definitely, you know, I've been off work for a long time. And then I think my parents are now saying the longer you leave it, then it's going to be even more anxiety to go back. But when I was working there in retail at Zara, I was very, very quick, very assertive, everything. I was very quick. But then, I think on the low, I'm just going to be kind of like slow pace, but being put under pressure and it'd be quite difficult. So I just need to get more stable, a bit higher so I can actually get on and do certain things. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Of course, something something that you can. That's why I'm saying about something that is regular and that you can hold on to and that gives you that structure so that you can kind of come back yeah, into yourself a little bit more because it sounds like you've been having a bit of a major roller coaster ride to be honest <laughs> yeah because i think i was staying in brighton for a bit i mean when i first got zara and i was very on and off taking my pills so my moves did go a lot higher i was sleeping only a few hours a day and it was you know i wasn't really sleeping 
But then when I went to London, I wasn't sleeping at all for many nights yeah. and then wandering around the streets early hours of the morning and not sleeping for day. And it wasn't, wasn't good. But then I thought when I was on this high, I was just, just like full of energy all the time. I wake up in the morning at 6am, I'm full of energy. Yeah. But now I'm completely opposite. I mean, yeah. I sleep, it could, my sleeping is not good. I could go to bed at 11 and wake up at 11 yeah. and it's too much sleep. And yeah. no, I just need to find the right thing. And, you know, I think the supplements are quite good. Uh, my grandmother gave me says so one's got turmeric and ginger and yeah. they're like vitamins um k2 vitamin d vitamin c things like that but that's not going to work straight away i need to continually take them so yeah it's a, it's 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 the i mean i definitely i just got to keep going on about the regularity i think you know something yeah. is regular you know that's that's why you know it it could be and it, it could be herbs it could be massage it could be some kind of reiki I mean, I think if it were me, I'd definitely be advising you some kind of sort of regular sort of herbs, because that's something that that is it, it works slowly, but it's it's very it's very sort of physically keeping you, you know, really sort of working slowly and surely something like that, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm going back to Daniel. Help me, Daniel, please. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I think herbal medicine, you know, um, it can affect your your mind really it can affect the the way that you think and uh and um like deborah was saying that process can be a bit slow sometimes yeah but and if the supplements like, and vitamins are helping mm. then that's a really good indication isn't it because it means that you know your body is adapting to things like supplements and vitamins and so it could also deal with herbs presumably yeah because I've only just started taking them. I like I was with vitamins I was taking before. These supplements are a bit different because there was this book what was called I think Recovery of People Who've Got Anxiety and Depression, and it's meant to, and it's really helped them. And it's got you know it's a lot more the healthy lifestyle and it's alternative instead of being on the prescription drugs, which makes it a lot more. I think you know what can the side effects and changing your way of thinking and really because it really has been affecting me and it's no difficult yeah. situation can you can yeah. you take herbs daniel if you're on um medication like a lanspine and the sodium so, uh so one of the herbal teachers i work with has been working with a is a specialist in, in mental health and and he prescribes herbs no matter what medication people are taking okay well that's good to know because that's always a worry isn't it yeah so there are just you know there are a few herbs very few that that have uh, some interaction, which are kind of contraindicated. Yeah, but um, you know, there's not many, and they're mostly the sort of Western herbs that are to do with affecting your mood, right? Yeah, but um, because those interact with the other drugs that are trying to affect your, your mood. Yeah, that but, makes sense. You know, in general, um, um, in general, I, I sort of advise, yeah, to take herbs no matter what other medication you're taking, I think. Yeah, and that's not the position of all herbalists, but I think that's a, a lot of herbalists would say that. I'd, I, I just wanted to ask, what, what, are there things that physical things that you've done as well as the, um, you know, the hypnotherapy and the, you know, obviously the, the medical things, are, are there things that you enjoy doing that are physical you know either sport or you, you mentioned exercise. yeah i used to do um yeah i do a lot of i do running yeah um, which is a few times a week and uh i do photography i was doing a lot last time i went but i think this was in the manic phase which wasn't good doing photography at this was a london fashion week oh, wow. so i was doing photography there and doing some of that but then when i went a bit over the board when I was doing the photography because all my moves went high. So I was walking all around London at like I would I remember getting the train up at like very late and just walking around and for hours on end and it wasn't there was, you know, I do that. I um got into doing some sort of martial arts to try and focus my mind on something. Oh interesting. Yeah. How, how, was that useful? Yeah, that was quite good. I've only just started doing that. But I think that's quite a good focus. Mm. That's a good point. Um, what kind of martial arts is it, James? 
Well, this was um, well, it was Taekwondo. Oh. Um, Taekwondo, but then I actually it was meant to be was meant to be going to the Kung Fu class, but then it was went to the <laughs> went to the wrong one, and I didn't know it was in a different hall. Yeah. Yeah, because you yeah. mentioned meditation, and I mean I'm definitely no good at meditating because I can't I can't I can't sort of focus my mind in that way. But you know, for me, sort of again, I'm talking about the physical thing as well. It's like if I if I do things with my body, then that also allows my mind to be a lot better. So, you mm -hmm. know, for me it's yoga, but it could be qigong or it could be kung fu or it could be taekwondo or whatever it is. But again, it's that it's that regularity because somehow by making my body sort of make those movements, it also allows my mind to sort of relax a little bit. I have to focus yeah. on, on the movement and then my mind doesn't have the space to be able to sort of do whatever it wants to do, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of focusing on it. it, doesn't think too much. But what I do is it ends up con like controlling and it's kind of like ends up like I'm kind of just be doing the meditation and let the thoughts control me. And it's I should be trying to do something to try and take my mind off things, but it just keeps going on, it keeps going round. And it's very kind of like I've got this bad habit of it and it doesn't, it's kind of, I just you know it's trying to find a focus but sometimes it takes control of me all the time so yeah. i could be sitting there for hours and thoughts going around in my mind and i don't get on and do something because it's really controlling me yeah that's that yeah. It's, it's back to that thing isn't it about the body and the mind i keep talking yeah. about the body and i'm saying like the more you can get your body to really sort of have some kind of regularity and some stuff to focus on then that's mm. going to allow your mind to stop taking over all the time you know because otherwise you just you just get stuck in this thing and then you know it's it's just i mean obviously really anxiety inducing and totally you know horrible do you know what i mean this so you know things that are really regular so you know that oh every morning i'm going to wake up at this time and i'm going to do these things and you know that kind of thing is is in a way it's kind of soothing to your mind do you know what i mean by working yeah i know what you mean yeah it's kind of like something to get up for in the morning because it seems like I've got this habit now that I've always I remember when my mood was high I was so kind of doing so many things at once I was designing clothes and I was putting mental health and uh, fashion together and collaborating and mm. design, doing stuff like that just doing so many different things but I was doing so many things at once and I wasn't you know you've got to focus it's got to be a focus yeah. so you know yeah design the clothes or do some painting or you know yeah. something like that some very regular things I don't know like an art class or or a singing class or do you know what I mean sort of regular things so mm -hmm. every Tuesday I do this every Wednesday I do this I know it sounds really boring but it's actually it's it's like it's giving you hooks so that you can kind of stabilize yourself in some way yeah it's kind of getting that routine absolutely kind of getting the swing of things i know this yeah. is a very boring thing to say and i'm really sorry james but you know i <laughs> no, think no, those no. things are really helpful to do those kind of very regular yeah. things the people that i've treated with mental health issues they you know they've they've always they've always felt so much better and it's always worked so much better whatever we do if if they have something to hook on to some regularity type thing so yeah. you know i mean of course i'd like to say that acupuncture can help and chinese herbs can help and massage can help but also you need to sort of weave some kind of regular pattern for yourself you know? yeah De deborah we've 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 got five minutes past our moment um but i ha i'm aware that uh, neither tessa nor emma have said anything and might have something to say um if i i know tessa you've missed the beginning so but if anything's coming to mind which we can say quickly before we we say goodbye to james um i think i i think just to reiterate really um the how sometimes the scaffolding can be really helpful that it's not a, it's not something that that kind of routine can, can from the outside seem like um confinement something that traps us but actually it can be a really supportive structure so that then it gives the possibility of being able to 
you know, you sound like a very creative person who likes to express yourself. So maybe you need that supporting structure to help you do that in a way that's safe for you. That's yeah, definitely. No, thank you. I can relate to that. <laughs> oh, no, I, I didn't, sorry, James, I didn't hear the beginning, but um, I, and I didn't know whether you'd had you whether you have counselling or whether you had that before. But just listening to you for a short period of time, it sounds quite traumatic what you've you know what you've experienced. And I just wondered whether you yeah. talk whether you do talk to people about you know what's happened um, regularly or um whether there's somebody in your life that you do that with or whether you have counseling that was all i was wondering yeah i've had um counseling which i started actually in college and um so i ha had a bit of that and i've had things similar when i had the hypnotherapy and things things like that but um it's you know it's it's been yeah very difficult for me like with the different traumas i had and things like that. and it's just finding the right thing again but I do have you know I had that, that hypnotherapy but that didn't really seem to work out for me and I found it kind of like um as much as he was giving you know information it was hard to kind of take it you know take it on board because the way my mind's been playing up it's hard to explain but I mean um yeah I've still been fine you know it's just very difficult of what route to go and been finding it very hard um yeah, no, I hear. yeah, absolutely. Just, I suppose my thought would be just having that outlet to constantly express yourself it would be important. Yeah, it's just getting myself in my mood to get, well, I think, more up again because it's just been on such a low for these, you know, over half a year. And on the high, it was just completely different. And I mean, it was just just the kind of things I was doing it was just taking loads of putting my life at risk a lot of times I remember there's loads of things what I was doing what wasn't good at all I think crossing the road nearly getting hit by cars just taking Gosh. risks and oh yeah I was I was you know, my mood went just extremely high and um, I walked into a hospital and then I had to they had to keep me overnight and just say about you know, because I just kept w walking the streets and I didn't know what to do. Um, but then the lows, what I'm having now, is just the complete opposite. I don't want, like, any of the attention on me. And I think the main thing I actually had with a counsellor was caring what people think. So in my thinking now, I'm really kind of like, I could be just worrying whatever people perceiving me. And I've, that's always been in my mind for... You know, it's a bit since I had a counselling from the age of 19, I'm 26 now. I think that was the main thing what I had around my way of thinking was a lot more caring what people think and like how I'm coming across and analysing everything. And on the low, that really comes up. But then on the high, I didn't really have that. So, um, yeah. I, I Thank you very much. For, for coming in um, to our thing. I'm sorry that we haven't, uh, I don't feel like we've had, you know, perhaps, you know, we haven't sorted you out by any means, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I see a, a, you know, a fine chap and I'm sure, you know, there is, there is definitely hope, isn't there? And I think that, you know, I think you've got to keep persisting. And I think it's probably some quite good advice about building a structure. Yeah, um, definitely. You've all been all been great and giving me good advice. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I mean, uh, you know, all of these people who are therapists, not me, but they're available to see at the Anahata. And um, you know, we're quite cheap, so we're we're not so expensive as your hypnotherapist. <laughs> yeah, I know that was it was extremely expensive. Mm. Yeah, you'd be well, a millionaire that <laughs> giving them all the all the money for the sessions. Yes, it, I think I think hypnotherapy, it's something that sort of the idea is to sort you out in, you know, a few sessions, whereas I, I, I get the impression that, mm. um, you know, it might be a steady advance that you need. I had a CBT, ah. uh, just quickly, so I had a CBT therapist who gave me a few sessions because I, he was part of the 
Langley Green Mental Health Hospital. And he gave me a few sessions of trying to change my way of thinking and to do things what maybe were on your high. So doing the photography or doing things to going to London to heighten your mood. But still, nice. I feel like I'm still stuck. So even though I've had these sort of help, but I might have not been enough. I still found it kind of like very hard of what, you know, what sort of thing I need to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sorry. We, you know, I, I'm going to have to say goodbye and um, thank you very much for sharing. I think you've been very open with us and I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you all so much for your help. Yeah. Thank, thank you, James. James. Thank you, James. Yeah. I was I was gonna yeah. say yeah go, go on I was gonna say what if I want to be going you know even more sessions or anything at this at the clinic and a Leicester clinic I can't even say it that the clinic what what uh, can I get in touch by the email again yes definitely yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 I'll definitely do that yeah and you could always ring as well that's the other option <laughs> yeah nice to meet yeah, you that'd be good. yeah nice to meet you too thank, thank you thank you. Okay. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. 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 Thank you. Oh, so hard. Poor old yeah. Colette. Yeah, hang on. Yeah, how are we doing? Yeah. You ready, guys? Hello. Colette, can you hear me? Oh, God, I've no idea. Oh, we can we hear can you. Hear. We can hear you, Colette. We're, you're winning. Yeah. You're almost there. Um, what do I need to press then? There is a button. To seen? To get Something the... to do with it. It looks like a video thing, Colette. Oh, you've done it. You've done it. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, well done. That's amazing. Ah, ah, well done. Yeah. Get there in the end. It's all Hello, about persistence. <laughs> Hi, Colette. Nice Sorry we're so late. Yeah, you've been That's patient. Right. I thought I'd done something wrong. No, not at all. No. We, <laughs> we're just uh, going over. Yes, we 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 we've been slow ourselves to to assemble, uh, and we've been chatting to a gent who's, uh, you know, well, you know, took a little longer than we thought. So um, now you've got us. Uh, shall I introduce you to everyone? I'm <laughs> Phil. I'm Phil, <laughs> and I spoke to you um, on the phone the other day. Ah, oh, it was you, was it? It was me. <laughs> I'm not a therapist. I'm the, you know, I'm the fool, really. Um, now <laughs> we've got <laughs> we've got um, Daniel up in there, who who's a uh, herbalist and a acupuncturist. And, Hello. Um, Hi. And we've got Deborah, who is uh, sort of chief uh, of the clinic and acupuncturist. And Colette and I met already because we ah. did a, a Zoom trial. We did. Excellent. <laughs> and Emma, who's a, an experienced counsellor. Hi, Kurt. Hi. And Tessa, who is, um, well, a fascinating lady, but she's also an acupuncturist amongst many other things. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I'm a bit. I'm trying not to be dark and have this light. Oh, that's oh, quite. No. It's, you look, you look mystical like that. That's cool. Yeah, it'll yeah. be off. <laughs> it works. It works. Some someone's told you how to mute your back. You know, blur your background. Oh, I have. To, my friend's son came and set it up because I, I oh, couldn't get God. it to work. My son kindly um, blocked my camera access and microphone access as a form of security for me. Oh. But, but didn't tell me. I see. <laughs> and I'm not clever enough to work anything like that out. So uh, he's away in Germany. Son isn't came. It? Yes. Yeah. My friend's son came and he went through, he just went through all the settings. Brilliant. And so oh, that's here good. I am. Excellent. Yeah. So do you want to say what you what you would like from this session, maybe? Um I, I don't really know. Um I'm literally um, just trying to round up advice. Um, my neck, I had a lot of motorcycle accidents. Um, and on top of that, I've had car accidents. And my family genetics are such that we have 
tendon problems and ligament problems where they're, they're not as flexible as they should be and they tear easy and I've damaged mine a lot in specific areas and I also make um, fibrous lumps on my tendons well, which affect the flexibility as well. And my neck's quite bad. Um, I went for, I've been to see a few chiropractors who wouldn't treat me. Um, the osteopath that I saw was really struggling to move me because my tendons are so tight and inflexible. Mm. And I literally feel like I've, I'm down to aromatherapy massage just to keep my circulation going and my lymphatic system draining properly. And I think that's about as much, really, as I can expect from my body at this stage. Oh, dear. It's, um, it's just is, it is what it is. You, know, you can't have that many accidents and get flung all over oh, and not damage yourself 40 were they, years were, later. Were they recently, these, these accidents? Or... 40 no, years. No, they were. Oh, 40 yeah, years. Yeah, they were all in my, uh, the bike accidents were in my 20s and then the car accidents have happened in my 30s and 40s. And I, I gave up driving when I was 52. Um, and so I haven't had touch wood anymore oh good <laughs> that's yeah. good yeah that's what i thought if i just don't do it i won't get hit so the knock-on effect is there's not there's not a lot of movement and it's getting tighter and my back spasms and my legs cramp um one of my foot swollen because i've got plantar tendon issues and that's come from my Achilles. Both my Achilles tore yet again within a week of each other nearly two years ago. And from that, I slowly have to get back. But they're, they're so inflexible, my Achilles tendons to my feet now, that they're not moving. And I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, I um, can't remember what they call them, somebody at um, Burgess Hill Foot Clinic um, who got me to get some extra high arch support? Oh, the podiatrist, podiatrist. Yeah, that's it. But yeah, that one with the P word. They gave you some orthotics, um, maybe, did yeah. they? Yeah. Uh, I've got to go back in three weeks' time, and they're going to make me a pair for my feet that I can take out and put in any shoe, oh. which is good. But I'm in agony. I can, you know, but if I sit down when I get up, I can't. I'm limping, and the underneath of my foot on the arch is just swollen. So I'm literally stitched together with needle and thread, and I'm, you know. And I was hoping for some more advice. I stopped the acupuncture when COVID hit because everything stopped, um, and I've just got back into the massage. Um, mm. which is why I joined your, your clinic because the one the lady that I was going to see retired so I'm just looking I was looking at harder massages but it said you know if you're in a lot of pain and you're howling your way through the massage then the massage is too heavy <laughs> <laughs> can you stop doing it oh. I know, well, I just thought it was pain, oh. pain as opposed to pain, pain. I mean, you know, what comes to my mind is is like a it's a three pronged attack. One is to do with um, making sure that your muscles and tendons and ligaments have got the nourishment they meet, need so that they can be softer. And this is some kind of dietary type thing. Um, maybe it's some supplements. You know, it's got to be something like that. This could be like a nutritional type consultation. Chondroitin. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a few different yeah. things. And, I, you know, I honestly I've think tried that, that there's some I think I think that this could be a, a, a very specific um, sort of nutritional type advice. 
you know so yeah. you know i think that would be really really useful um and the next thing is um which came to mind was <clears throat> rather than i'm i'm not massively keen on chiropractors i'm really sorry but um you know i would suggest um some kind of craniosacral or cranial osteopath or all that kind of stuff because what they do is that they can move the ligaments and the tendons and the muscles without it's not a crunching movement it's a very gentle sort of movement yeah so if you if your muscles get softer then it's possible to be able to actually sort of release things a little bit because things have got really yeah. really tight and then yeah. um with respect to, I mean, again, you know, I'm an acupuncturist, so I'm always going to think in acupuncture terms. You know, what you were talking about is um, is uh, the whole channel that goes down the back and down the back of the legs, and then it goes underneath the soles of the feet and all that kind of stuff. And actually, there's a there's a little bit in the in the Yellow Empress Classic, the 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 which is like the Bible for acupuncture, and uh, it talks about this channel being like a massive muscle. So that kind of ties in with everything that you're saying because it sounds like that whole area is just massively massively tight so yeah. if it were me i would suggest first you have a nutritional consultation and at the same time you set up both the cranial osteopath and some acupuncture and you do them in tandem so you do like one week one one week another or one every two weeks one and one every two weeks the other but you do them you know like both of them one after the other not in the same week that doesn't work yeah but that kind of thing. So whether it's, whether it's nutrition, whether it's Chinese herbs, you know, whether it's whatever, but you know, those are the three things that I think would really work for you. I think I, I can totally see that the massage is helpful because it's going to, you know, it's going to help stretch the muscles, but the problems is that the muscles, they're not, they're not actually able to relax because they're not spongy like they should be. They're kind of a little bit dried up without wanting to be rude. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, that's why I'm that's talking how they about feel. herbs or uh, nutrition or something like that so that you can actually get your muscles in, a, in, in the way that they should be. And then the rest of it will work a hell of a lot better, basically. That sounds great. That's my thought. Up to you guys. Over to you. <laughs> sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. Can't do chondroitin. Yeah, it I doesn't, tried, it doesn't do it. I tried it. It gave me thrush. Oh. I yeah, so, I mean, that I was think... a bizarre side effect. I think one of the things there is about that is that's why I said, you know, maybe it's nutrition and maybe it's Chinese herbs. I don't know. But because for these things to work, your digestive system needs to work properly. And I looked at your notes and it said that you didn't think that your digestive system was working very well. You said that you were putting on weight and you didn't seem to be able to get it off and all this kind of stuff. So, mm. you know, I'm thinking that something has to something has to work there yeah. for you to be able to then absorb the nutrients in the way that you need. Daniel, can you help me, please? Uh, what was I going to add to that, what you said? Uh, so I was going to say with the osteopathy, yeah, important to do the cranial sacral osteopathy yes. or look, look for someone who's trained in cranial sacral osteopathy because yeah. uh, the, uh, the normal osteopaths are well-trained, but it's slightly different. Yeah. So they do, sometimes they do something similar to chiropractic. They do a lot of no, we've, I mean, we've, Daniel, yeah. we've got a really fantastic cranial osteopath at Anahata. She's absolutely brilliant. And I yeah. totally agree. Oh. It's a completely different ball game. Mm -hmm. yeah so the cranial sacral which is kind of gently kind of easing your tendons and muscles out and working with your body rhythm to kind of get things to flow a bit nicer um is uh is the way you want to go particularly because you've had all this stuff with the neck i mean it's the cranium so it's that area mm. and the sacrum it's landing on your head with a helmet on yeah after being hurtled through the air at <laughs> 40 mile yeah. an hour and having an impact well it's a good thing you had the that. helmet on yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Said, well the main one i did buy it the week before and it was a really good helmet so it was worth the money yeah. oh thank god okay. for that yeah yes. i know yeah thank you spirit <laughs> it's funny it's fun. yeah so because that 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 cranial thing there's the sort of emotion as well locked into the body of the whole event and uh, I went to see a lady yeah. and she sort of, she yeah. helped me release this, uh, this upset that was locked in there. Well, there's a lot locked in there, I think. 
mm. repeatedly. What, and I what was happens about... when you don't give in? <laughs> Sorry to interrupt there. Uh, yeah, I was wondering about um, uh, heat and uh, warmth and whether uh, you've done like going into a sauna and has that been it, something that could be helpful for you as well to ease things a little mm. bit? And, really good idea. Yeah, good. so, um, so, uh, well, going into a sauna, really, like that we, and Anna had to be do, they do have one, so it might be worth something like doing something like that every week for a half an hour to warm things up, unless you have something that would prevent you from doing that, like a blood pressure issue or something, I don't know. I have low blood pressure. Low blood pressure is probably fine, as well, right? Is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, like, because you, because it sounds like you need to incorporate a few different things, like Deborah was saying. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the sauna is an easy one to just warm and kind of relax things. And it, yeah. Yeah. And that so, would be brilliant to do before a massage or before the cranial or before anything so that things can really relax and, and you know, kind of be as soft as possible. That's a good idea. Yeah, we've got, two, we've got two sorts of saunas. We've got the far infrared and we've got the steam sauna, which is also an ozone sauna downstairs. So you can have a go at both. Yes, I think I should. Mm. I think that sounds really nice. Mm. I'm very neglected. Oh, I know. I've done it to myself. So. Oh. But I'll take all the sympathy I can get. Them, <laughs> yeah. Even well, though that's... I've done it to myself. Yeah, no, that's that's important. Self nurturing. That's a really important thing. That's what you're doing now. Yes, yes. But I'm gold stars. What's Thank that? You. Gold stars. Ah, <laughs> yeah. yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Can I ask? Oh, I've got. Sorry, go on. Sorry, no, no, you carry on. No, I, I was going to whisper. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh no, I, I'm just wondering how you, you know, how you cope emotionally with everything that's happened and um, as you, you've been through a lot, haven't you, with, with all the accidents and I just wondered, you know, that, that um, all those emotions that must come along with that, I suppose that's what I was thinking, I, all these people here are clever with them, um, very clever with body and I was just thinking about what how you take care of yourself emotionally with everything that, you, that you've been through and that you that you have to cope with on a daily basis by the sounds of it um i i swallow it because there's nothing i can do about it but i know that it's stuck in my throat i feel like you know it's been shoved down but it's it's stuck here because there's no point letting it out. There's just no point in letting any upset out. You know, it, it just, I just get on with it and ignore it. You know, and uh, being here, finding you lot on the, on, I can't remember where I found you now. Um, it's like a wake up call for me to go and deal with me. And, and because the site looks really holistic and there's so many different aspects to that inside the umbrella of Anahapa, I thought if I could get in there and I can be looked at as a whole person and things um, be done to help me, that could channel me to heal, you know, and get some of it out. But I don't and haven't for years expressed emotion or all the pain. You know, I never get angry about it and I just swallow it all the more. Because there's no point. I haven't got anywhere to let it out to. Um, nobody wants to listen to me mourning on. They all know about my accident and there's literally no point in talking about it, which hasn't helped. <laughs> in the long run. 
Uh, but here I am, and already I've got all these suggestions of things that I can do to help myself. And you've just added the last piece. Yeah, I mean, which you is, could... which is the emotions. Going to see Emma would be probably top of your list by the sounds of it. Yeah. I could do with being able to just get that out somewhere and get it out of me and get it away. Yeah. Because being stoic, it's, it's, I've had to be stoic. It's not a choice. It's, it's, it has to be done. But now I don't need to be so stoic and I don't want to be, you know, because it's my, my time to heal me now. I don't have to, heal everybody else and be there for everybody else you know now i'm on my own i can deal with me but i've got worse so here i am so it might be a really good release for you to get rid of all of that. yeah because it's like being it's like being semi-choked you know it's kind of trapped because it can't come out of here and that's the only exit route for it and I don't do it, apart from now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is my emergency plan sent by the spirit. Mm. Yeah, to get me, you know, another 20 years out of myself. As for that, I'm, I'm, I'm locking up, I'm physically locking up and I am probably emotionally locking up because the more it hurts the more I lock up so that's really Thank good you. you've got some good awareness going there and uh yeah thank you I mean I I, I as, are there any last thoughts that we need to say um apart from I might I want to say is book in with Emma that's a priority and uh, I'll I'll put you in the sauna at some point if you like. <laughs> um, yeah. What do what do I do? How do I book in for these? Because I want to do the nutritionist thing. Sorry. On the crane. I want to do all the things that were suggested. Right. Great. If you ring the clinic and and talk to the receptionist, uh, any time they can book you in. Um, Emma Russell is definitely the name to remember. And uh, there's two saunas, and uh, you can, you know, have a go at either of those. So if and, I did the sauna, and cranial osteopath is called Venetia, and we've got three acupuncturists here. You can take your pick. We've got loads of acupuncturists. We've got <laughs> acupuncturists of coming acupuncturists. out of our ears. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You're like a porcupine. <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, they don't do that. They, these ones, at least I, as far as I know, they don't put lots of needles in because I, I'm a needle phobe. So the, the really, the really good ones, yeah, just put in a few. That's my oh, I'm not, I'm not so bad. I've been stabbed today with my fourth um, vaccine. Oh my god! A delta, a delta plus Omicron for my oh. arms. Like I've got oh. one really sweaty arm and one cold arm. Oh and my friend said, if you wave your arm about for one minute every half an hour, you don't get that, that sore arm thing. Oh. I know, so I'm going to give it a go. Fair enough. <laughs> and I'll report back if it works. <laughs> so I've got Emma for emotionals. I've got the sauna. Yeah. Before the cranial thing. Yeah, cranial. And then you're sort of going to do alternate cranial and uh osteo uh, uh, sorry acupuncture is that is that yeah. what yeah but, switch but, but, but lot, out, yeah but, but all the time going to see emma to do, i want to do the nutritionist thing as well ah because i've got i've got food intolerances mm. and i think it would help if it was narrowed down so for the food intolerances, then um, the, the best person that I can think of is, um, is Sabine, who does kinesiology. Right. Because I, I do need a better diet. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's quite often it isn't about 
you know, you can't or you shouldn't. It's more about trying to find the best way, you know, that works for you in terms of when you eat and what you eat and, you know, like rather expanding than contracting. Do you know what I mean? Because quite often what happens is it's like, oh, no, can't eat this, can't eat this, can't eat this. And that really doesn't work. So it's more about, you know, the kind of food when you're eating it, you know, those kind of things. That's yeah. I mean, that's that's the sort of advice that that acupuncturists and herbalists give you generally. <laughs> yeah. And, and Sabine told me not to eat Marmite. So or it wasn't mom. It was it was a Vegemite thing, you know. She said she tested me. You now she didn't have that. It's the th- it's always oh. the thing you really like. <laughs> you might find oh, you. Oh God! <laughs> no, no. I, I'm a more mite person. Actually. Are you? Well, you might be yeah. fine. I won't put. I won't poison the well. <laughs> I'll sneak it in <laughs> in the waste and see if she picks up on it. <laughs> right, I've got that. Yeah. So I'm going to ring the clinic and arrange for these things to happen. Great. Yes. Yeah, well, thank you very much for calling in. It's been lovely to see you. And uh, I hope thank you, you, you know, your advice, everybody. You're very welcome. Yeah, just to yeah. say, Colette, you don't have to do everything all at once. I think, you know, it's really a matter of sort of organising a programme so that you've got everything kind of, you know, and if you need any advice about what to do when, then, you know, ask in reception or if you've got any problems, then just get them to refer to me and I'll kind of try and give some some guidance. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Right. I've stored your name for advice. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So much. <laughs> Cheers. Have a good evening. Yeah. Yes. Bye. 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 Oh, we made it. Yes, yes, we did. Oh my God, oh, we made it. <laughs> I know you had a moment there, Ra. Oh, but it's all good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much uh, for being there. And. Uh, I'm sure you've got a client there, Emma, don't you think? <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that poor lady. It's really interesting yeah. that it's her neck and she talked about, you know, not being able to express herself. Isn't that so interesting? Yeah. It was all kind of yeah. physically stuck in that area. Yeah. It, she's not, yeah, she's not expressed any of it, but she's really clear, isn't she, that it's all, it's yeah. all. She was very self-aware. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, what a lovely lady. Yeah, yeah lovely. Sweet. Yeah, and I'm a bit, I mean, I'm a bit worried about James. Yeah. Do you think he'll come in for anything? Do you think he's... I hope he does, but who knows? You know, I really don't know. It's really difficult to tell. Mm. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, shall we... Uh... Say and we missed night. out on our thing, didn't we? We missed on our out. own chat. Do we want oh, to have no. a quick? Do you want to do any little bit of chat now? <laughs> well, I just had more questions about James and, and what you guys thought, and like kind of, yeah, <laughs> like um, like with the sleep, like now because we were talking about regularity and like structuring things, and now he's in this low where he's sleeping for like twelve hours sometimes. But I kind of wanted to ask him, like, what happens if you, you know, if you set an alarm for 7.30 or 8 and you get up then, do you just not function or is it very different? Or You know what I mean? Cause, yeah. It's a really good question. Yeah. You should have asked it, Daniel. I know. I kind of like had it on my tongue, but then I didn't know quite how to put it together. Like, what happens? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And I wondered with if, if when your experience with uh, bipolar, if that's like if that's even sort of possible, like, you know what I mean? Is it physically, can you just physically not function if you're not yeah. laying down for 12 hours? Sometimes people are just mm. completely like, they won't even leave their bed. They won't leave their room. Yeah, you know, well, I guess when it's really... Days on end. Mm. And then the rest of the time, you know, when they're in the manic episode, then, um, I mean, the people that I've seen, you know, it's like they're God. Do you know what I mean? They don't mm. sleep at all like yeah. really not at all it's yeah. quite horrendous to be honest must be awful mm. 
because they're outside of your kind of control, isn't it? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Do we have any idea what's going on? Why is that? What's going on? Is it endocrine dis disbalance, you know, dysregulation, or what? Why do people have this situation? It's and obviously it's a syndrome, to, but we don't understand why. I mean, I'm fascinated by. I mean, I was thinking that this. Why would a water enema solve it? You know, back in the thirties, if there's any truth in that. <laughs> Yeah, and I think solve it. It's maybe <laughs> like I don't know. Yeah. Maybe there is some truth that it helped people a bit. I'm definitely going to research that. I mean, mm. I think you know, there's lots of people who say lots of things that have helped them, and mm. you know, I I think it's difficult to have like one thing solves everything. Like a know? nutshell, yeah, I can't really. I think that's a problem. I also think that you know, in my experience with especially with sort of schizophrenics or bipolar it's it, you know part of it is a society issue because i've also met people who've you know who've done things like ridden horses in the in in you know deepest russia or whatever and do you know what i mean that kind of thing as and, a cure as a cure yes as a cure or people who have or as you know definitely making them better or the whole kind of like shamanic society where you know somebody who is in that state is actually you know in touch with the cosmos sort of thing and so it's it's seen as a positive thing and then that person is supported and you know we're in this terrible situation where you know, we're, we're, we don't support these people at all. All we do is we just sort of kind of down them with, you know, with a olanzapine, which is, it's, a, I mean, it's, it's, it's basically like having a sort of damp, wet blanket over you all the time. I mean, you can't think straight, you put on weight, you're really muzzy. Do you know what I mean? I mean, that's just, I think that's awful personally, really awful. And if that's the best we can do, that's pretty pathetic from my point of view. Yeah, I was wondering, you know, if we had shamanic point of view, we're missing, um, is it Claire? Who's, who's the lady that it's does that? Eva. The... Eva, sorry, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and I mean, that would be useful, wouldn't it? Yeah, Definitely. that would have been a nice, uh, you know, perspective to listen to. And to actually, that. I mean, it, you know, originally it wasn't James who, I had a chat with his, with, with his partner and she said, oh, I think he needs to have some kind of energy healing, you know, when it, do you know what I mean? Yes. And it's possible that he does. But when he was talking, I was just thinking, you just, you know, how do we get you back into your body? Because he's, mm. he's not in his body. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That was the thing, you know. So even the idea of like, you know, when he said he was doing Taekwondo or whatever, I'm like, brilliant. <laughs> do more Taekwondo, you know. <laughs> no, I had the same thought. I had it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, thank you, everybody. Lovely to see you all, and uh, have a good rest of the week. And look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Bye, nice night, you. night, night, night. Bye, ciao. Bye, bye, ciao, 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 ciao.